Okay, welcome back. So summer hours are harder. We are uh, in the Sefer, Shabbos Kodesh, in the English book, page 19, and longing for Shabbos in the Hebrew Sefer on Daf Yudet, towards the bottom. Zechia ayidei she'ifa la saga tadavar. Acquiring something via longing for it. That there isn't, there isn't a concept in Judaism that when we long for something, when we want it, that itself is the way in which we acquire it. And that's what we've been leading up to till now. So, Yesod ze motzim anabun kamot nosafim. This idea, oh, yeah, we have, another, we have another volume in my office for you. Would you like it? This idea we can find in other places. Based on what did the Jewish people merit to leave Mitzrayim and to go into freedom? Through the shouting, the crying out to God. That they wanted to leave. In other words, the, the fact that they wanted something, and Rosalovich calls it need based, they had a need. Realizing of needs itself are, is a very important process, part of the process of redemption. Someone who has no needs cannot be freed, right? Otherwise, that's an animal, an animal, or less than an animal. Animals have needs, right? They may be simple needs, but they're needs. But if you don't have needs, then there's no way you can ever uh, be released and freed and, and, and get anything that's, that's good for you. Shirot Sulatis, Yodim Divrei Rashi al Pasuk, Betchilas Pasha Bishach, Bechamushim, Alu Bene Israel, and they came up. Chamushim, only one fifth of the Jewish people left Egypt. He spoke about that on Shabbos Agado. The Arba Chalakim Mesubishol and four fifths died in the days of darkness. And we pointed out the Madrash actually goes on and says maybe it was one fiftieth got out, maybe one five hundredth got out of its right. So that means that if six, uh, if there were um, six hundred thousand men. There's 1.2 million men and women. That means that everyone had a few children. That means roughly six to eight million got out of Mitzrayim. Multiply that times 500. That's how many were Mitzrayim. Now that's not a, sounds like an exaggeration of a number, but, um, but either way, the number was enormous. So what sin did they perform that prevented them from leaving Egypt? There was only one singular sin. Wow. They just didn't want it enough. They just didn't want it. Because if the redemption is predicated on Vaizaku wanting it, they had no need for it. You have no need. You don't go out. They had a good name. But they didn't feel a need to leave Mitzrayim. Once you leave, you get to receive the face of the Shekhinah. You get the Torah. So, so Amar Avalheim Amro Tov Yafa, good. However, Valanu Tov Gambalia Shekhinah. We don't need the Shekhinah. Im Kain Amar Karish Bachu Im Enchem Mislahavim Mitkabelat Pnei Shekhinah Tish Arukan. If you don't want to receive the face of the Shekhinah. So stay put where you are. Leaving Mitzrayim, leaving Galos, only happens because you want to leave. takes you out. So whatever your exile is, whatever your crisis is, the only way it begins with a desire to end it. Kishinirza, um, right? Anyone who wants to leave uh, an addiction, right? It's the first step towards resolving an addiction is to want to change. If you don't want it, it's not going to happen. No one can help you. No one can force you. Um, I saw a terrible meme about the, the basketball player who's, who's locked in, in, in Russia mm -hmm. said that she's the longest she's ever been off drugs since she's been in Russian prison. Wow. It's terrible. Wow. People are mean. Anyway, but the truth is, no one can force you to leave addiction normally, mm -hmm. which well, is. I guess uh, she's in a position. But yeah, but that's not, again, 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 you know, in the meantime, but if you want to change a habit, yeah. 
you have to want to change the habit in general, right? That's the point. Um, so we know the time quote, quotes, he says that by Rabbi Yoshebeer, he didn't want to receive the position of the uh, the city that had elected him as the Rav, the Rav in Brisk, right? Breslatovsk. He didn't want to receive the position. Once they, he realized there were thousands of people who had stood there and were waiting for him. He couldn't be Masarev. He couldn't refuse the position. And Mashiach is the same way. If Mashiach knew that we really wanted his arrival, so there would be no delay of the, of the Geula. It would happen right away. Hashem would come right away and, and help us. We don't want it badly enough. We don't want it badly enough. There's a story I've shared in the past. I heard this from, uh, from, from, from Shlomo Katz, that one time there was a Jew who came from the Carpathian Mountains to visit Israel. And the Baal Shem Tov said to him, don't talk to anyone. You realize what happens. You visit Israel. <clears throat> There's a great risk. So he said, okay, but, or be very careful with your words. So he goes and he visits Israel. And <clears throat> he has a conversation with one old Jew there. He figures, okay, it's safe. So, so what's going on? He says, well, I come from... You know, from white Russia. She says, she said, what's the situation with the Jewish people there? He says, you know, it's hard, but Baruch Hashem, we're making it through. Okay. So he davened, he went back to the Baal Shem, and the Baal Shem was a very upset with him. He said, what's the matter, Rebbe? He says, I told you, be careful with what you say. He says, I barely said anything. He says, what, did you meet anyone? He says, one Jew, one old man. What happened? He asked us, what's the matzav with, uh, with the Jews in, 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 in the diaspora? And I said, it's very hard, but we're, we're Baruch Hashem. We, you know, we're fighting. They're not going to complain too much. We're making it through. So he said, that was Elijah the prophet. And he wanted to see if you've had enough. And you said, you're making it. He said, you're fine. <clears throat> so that's the, the, the story. When the, when the, when the Beis HaLevi saw that, when people wanted him as the Rav, he couldn't refuse the, the nod. We shout to Hashem, we would get that as well. When it comes to Shabbos Kodesh, how do we get Shabbos? We want the Shabbos. We have to want it enough. <clears throat> so, a sias esek mi Shabbos, a business or esek of Shabbos. What is a wondrous piece of advice for how a person may attain um, Shabbos? La sok esek mi Shabbos. To make a business of Shabbos, Kol Marli Schor Shabbos Lo Rak B'Shabbos Atma Lagam Biyam Nishlif Now, meaning if you have a business, what do you do? You think about it all day long, right? You think about it beforehand. You go to work. You plan your day on Sunday, and you plan what you're going to do on Monday. So if you have a business on Shabbos, how are you going? To, what are you going to do with that? You would have to plan before Shabbos. So you halacha b'chadash mitzvah Shabbos. The only halacha, the only institution where you find planning in advance. Shabbos Shes Yamim Alinus Kor Shabbos. That all six days you have to remember the Shabbos. This concept is true because we, what do we say every day in the Shir Shal Yom, the song of, of the day? Hayom Yom Rishon B'Shabbos. Hayom Yom Sheni L'Shabbos. Yom Shlishi B'Shabbos. Today is the first day of Shabbos. Today is the second day of Shabbos. Today is the third day of Shabbos. Why are we calling it Shabbos? Because each day is part of the Shabbos cycle. Beis Hillel and Beis Shammai argue whether you, if you find a, a nice piece of meat, you should reserve it for Shabbos or you should eat it now and then say, and, and, and the next one for Shabbos. And how could Beis Shammai say the position that you should eat it now and not reserve it for Shabbos? The answer is, is because even now is a Shabbos. Even the preparation for Shabbos is a Shabbos. L'chein, therefore, v'adai, k'dai v'ratsui, rather, ma'od k'var b'yom revi, even it's desirable on Wednesday to think about, od yom in two more days, t'ye Shabbos. Over in Liyad Chanos, you go to the store. What I'm buying here is the Chavot Shabbos. I will be in the Holy of Holies. So I better get ready. How is Basel that I'm not going to buy something sweet for Shabbos? I'm in the store on a Wednesday. How could I not think about Shabbos? Oh, I need more tea. I'm going to get a, a, a box of tea for Shabbos. 
we're out of uh, whatever it is, right? We'll get it for Shabbos. Even if you use fancy, the fancy plastic wear on Shabbos. So you go to the store and getting that, that the regular Dixie plates. And then you say, well, I'll get the fancy plastic ones for Shabbos or I'll get, I'll get something else. Think about how, how when you go shopping, it's the Chavot Shabbos. When you get a haircut, right? The Chavot Shabbos, yeah. Uh, when you, when you have examples that people think, not to think on Shabbos, about business. The Deber Davar, right? Yes. Right. But what about I hear students who they are Jewish and then they say that they take Shabbos to study for the exam or to study for the... Oh, okay. So, that's, so can you think about Chol on Shabbos? We're talking about thinking about Shabbos on Chol. What about thinking about the weekday on Shabbos? So is a halacha that B'daber Davar, you don't talk about non-Shabbos things on Shabbos. You don't, um, you don't speak about these things that are not associated with, with the Yom of Shabbos. However... Um, and but you can talk about things of mitzvah. So, for instance, the Gemara says that uh, you can make a shidduch on Shabbos. It's a mitzvah, right? You could pledge money on Shabbos for tzedakah. Um, you could even plan the roads and public works on Shabbos. It's a mitzvah to take care of public works, right? The people shouldn't uh, drive in a pothole and get a flat tire and get hurt, right? Those things are lighting in, in areas where there's poor lighting, right? So that things you can actually talk about on Shabbos because all mitzvahs you can teach a child a trade because to the responsibility to teach your children how to make a living. <clears throat> so already we have heter and the Gemara says, Gemara Ksuvos. The question is where, where else does that go? So it also goes to things like, let's say you like, you, let's say you're reading for homework and you like, uh, you love math, but it happened to be, you have a math test, but you love math. So you're allowed to read a math book because you love math. If you don't love math, you can't read the textbook. You have to like it. You have, to, you have to find Menucha Shabbos out of it, right? Um, newspaper is also a funny question, right? Should you read it? Not. A newspaper has a lot of things that are not Shabbos, take a lot of horrible stories in it. Uh, the stock market is in it, the sports are in it. Those are not things that are necessary for Shabbos. But let's say it's an interesting human interest story, a story that's going to uplift, a story that's going to be intriguing for someone who's, uh, who's a thinking person who wants to have an interesting conversation there. It might be appropriate to read that article, right? So those are interesting things. Yeah. Okay, fine. <laughs> well, it depends. They may be right also. It depends on the subject matter. Yeah. <laughs> Friday. By Friday, everything's shouts. We see, uh, we see the, uh, the, 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 mommy is preparing fish. Oh, Shabbos, someone's getting salt for Shabbos. Shabbos comes, Shabbos is coming. The great leaders of previous generations are already making preparations for Shabbos already from the, from the beginning of the week. Here we go, I just quoted this. Motza Behema, Shama used to say, if you find an animal, Noah Omer, Zulu Shabbos, this is for Shabbos. No, man, you find another nicer one. But the second one is like, oh, I eat the first one. I was I mixed up Shama and Hillel, sorry. And Hillel disagrees. Lefi, Kama Shuos, based on several um, we, uh, weeks, on Zahida Hagish Zobatsmi, certain weeks I'm able to feel this experience as well. Not every week, sometimes. Beni, Baruch Hashem, my son got married. Shabbos Ali al Torah, the Shabbos before his marriage, which is called Ofrof. He went up, he got a Torah. So he said, Hundred guests came in. The cookies were already baked two weeks beforehand. Shabbos, and the, the Sunday before the Shabbos, Kvar Arachnu at Kolakiniot. We already arranged all the things that had to be purchased. That's, you always have to think like that. Okay, we have Shabbos coming around. We're going to have a guest called Hashem. On Monday, Shabbos. 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 Already on uh, Thursday. Purchase the fish. Shabbos is here. Shabbos. Come Shabbos, you don't do anything at that point. Rockley's score, just to remember, Shabbos is today. The table is a Shabbos table. 
Hashtender, Shal Shabbos, the Shtender is a Shabbos Shtender. So in certain shuls, they have tables in, in their shuls, right? So the way they do, they put out a white tablecloth for four Shabbos in all the shuls. And everyone participates in that. They put it out, you know, and they fold it up afterwards. Hashamayim, Shal Shabbos, HaKochavim, Shabbos, today the stars are Shabbos stars, right? The, uh, the 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 uh, heavens are Shabbos heavens. Ayom kulanu chayim b'soch beisol shalach berchol fodo v'atzmo. Today we all live in the house of God, in all of His glory. Before we go on, I'm reminded of a story. Shlomo Karloff tells a beautiful story that um, about one of the uh, hidden tzaddikim, and it's called Chatzkala Luchavod Shabbos. Chatzkala Luchavod Shabbos. He was a. It was a. There was a town. The town was called Ushbitzin later becomes known as Auschwitz. It was a very, very big Jewish community at one point, many years ago. Uh, Ushbitzin is right outside where the camp is. Um, so this town, uh, once there was a, there was a rub of the town um, and, uh, and uh, one of the great tzaddikim was visiting um, the town. One of the great Hasidic tzaddikim named Rav Shlomo Gershonover. So they want, they made preparations to meet Rishon Lashon Everyone's lining up. He shows up in town and people are going to greet him. And uh, the Rav is there. And the only one who was embarrassed to meet him was Chatzko. And Chatzko was, uh, you know, he was a simple guy. So when Rishon Lashon saw Chatzko standing in the back, he says, who's that person over there? He's, he notices a special person in the corner who's timid. And he says, is this, is this Chatzko? So they said, Chatzko, they said, uh, they, they said, why, why? Do they give you another name also? He says, yeah, they call me, he's embarrassed. They call me Chatzkel or Chabad Shabbos. Chatzkel in the honor of Shabbos. So he says, why do they call you that? He goes, ah, you know, kind of make fun of me. So because I, um, you know, I, I'm a porter. I'm a big, strong guy, and he carries things from the grocery store for people from the market. So when uh, Hanel is buying potatoes, Tuesday, two sacks of potatoes. I said, do you think any of them will be left over? She says, sure, to make me happy. And I start singing the Chavad Shabbos. Chavad Shabbos makes me so happy. And then Wednesday, I ask, you know, uh, Malka's buying something in the market. And then I slap that fur. And I said, do you think this is for Shabbos? Yeah, maybe a few of the items to say. And it makes me sing the Chavad Shabbos, the Chavad Shabbos. Thursday already, everything's right. Eggs and this. People are carrying Chavad Shabbos. And Friday, I don't even have to ask. Everything I'm carrying in the market is Chavad Shabbos. And all I do is I sing the Chavad Shabbos, the Chavad Shabbos, in the honor of Shabbos. So they call me Chatzka the Chavad Shabbos, the simpleton, right? So he's kind of embarrassed. So the uh, the, the, the tzaddik took a very special interest in Chatzka. He says, he's never heard such a thing. So um, he uh, he took him out under his wing. Um, and uh, the story goes on that years later, when uh, the, the the Rav had become, the Rav of the town had had become very, it took notice that Shalom Shonover had paid attention to Chaskal and he said, this is the kind of Rebbe that I need in my life. So I'm going to pay attention to all the, all the people, even not, you know, not fancy, not rich, not, not popular, just the regular Jews, right? They talk to everyone. So he says, I want him to be my Rebbe. And he became the replacement of the, the great Hasidic master afterwards. And uh, they, 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 they said they didn't hear from Chaskal for many years, but every now and then you could hear him singing Luchav Chavez in the woods. Say, so what happened to Chaskal? Chatzel became the leader of the Lamed of Tzadikim in Hasidic lore. It's based in the Gemara in, in Sokka, actually. Lu Tzadikim, Rabbi Mishim Bar Yochai and Rabbi Lazar say that the world would be, that the world is suspended because of 36 Tzadikim in every generation and the hidden Tzadikim. Everybody, everybody thinks they're either simpletons or Rishayim, but they're really Tzadikim. And uh, so they're, uh, they're the model of a Lamed of Tzadik in the Hasidic world were always the people that you least suspect. They're always the people who they're like their their low lives. So every great Chazid story is about Lama Tzadikim. So he became Chatzkel Lechav Jabs became the, the one of the one of the chiefs of the of the thirty six Tzadik. Wow. In the yeah. generation. Hashem rewards, and he he say in the Psalms, Proverbs. I don't remember, but it says, "Even a cup of water for his head, he's gonna be good." He was doing everything for Hashem, singing. Mm-hmm. So he always is paid. So Gemara, Gemara tells us that everything Avram did for his guests was repaid in the desert. So Avram provides water and Avram, Avram uh, gives bread to the guests and so on, right? And so Hashem gives them bread in the desert and, mm-hmm. and water. But the Gemara says that Avram said, um, right, um, take for yourself water. And again, he just has bris. So it was a little bit, but because of that, later on, uh, 
we had to extract water with great difficulty from the rock. It didn't come naturally. Yeah. And that's why Moshe hits the rock mm-hmm. when he gets frustrated. And that's why Moshe doesn't go into Israel. And that's why Moshe doesn't get to build the base of Midrash. That's why the base of Midrash is destroyed. Oh, because Avram granted uh, water to his guests, but says, um, help yourselves, as opposed to pouring it. That's a very pretty, uh, talk about the reverberations of that action. Okay. Achaz tiv velo erpenu. Uh, sorry, I skipped. Shirayim Shoshab Zatzma. Now, uh, we talk about, um, sorry, the shirim, the songs of Shabbos itself. Yesh no dover nifla shekayam rak b'Shabbos. There's something only is on Shabbos and doesn't happen by other mo'adim. Pesach sharim v'hisham dover v'sein on Shabbos. Pesach we sing v'hisham da. On Sokas we sing v'samach da b'chagecha. And other holidays, we all have our songs that are connected to those holidays. So, is there ever a song that says Pesach, Pesach, or Shuos, Shuos? No. Shabbos, Sharim, Shabbos, Shabbos, Yom Hashem. There is a, a very special song that we sing on Shabbos. It's in the, it's in the Zmiros, and it's called Shabbos Hayom La Hashem. Um, and the, the words are Shabbos, Shabbos, Yom Zimachuba, Bechol Yom. Today is the day that's honorable more than other days. Shabbos Atzma. In other words, all the other holidays, the songs we sing are not about the holiday per se. Pesach, we sing about how God rescued us. But we don't sing Pesach, what a day. We don't sing, you know, um, there are songs for every, every city, right? I don't know, is there a Chicago song? I'm sure there is, right? There's, there are tons of New York songs. There are Los Angeles songs, right? right. So, um, but, but you also, but you have songs about the day of Shabbos. In the, you know, in the non-Jewish world, we have songs about holidays they wrote. But in, Sha- in Zmiros, that we have, we don't have Zmiros that are, we don't have Zmiros that are associated with, with other, um, with, with other uh, days, right? We just have a Zmiros that, where they say, today is the day of Shabbos, right? So that's what he's saying. That's Shabbos Yom Hashem, Yom Zemechuba, today is the greatest day. Dabr Mal Shabbos Atma al Zechi Rasa, commemorating Jews. Klamar Achshav, Akol Shoveis. Now everything rests, everything stops. Yeshrak Kutchabrichu, all we have today is God. Ki Yeshlach Hashov al Kain, Kolazman, the Schosh Shabbos is Shemoshal Kutchabrichu. Know that Shabbos is one of the names that we have of God. The Haosekach, and one who does this, Yigale Lefeta Olamos, Niflaim. You will suddenly reveal great and wondrous worlds. The Lomishum Shu Yasig Godless, not because you will attain greatness. Ella shu kiviyachol yivgosh as a kodesh baruch hu beveso, but you will meet God today in the house. Anyway, kol sheishes yamim mitarchim b'shabbos. All the six days are blessed as on account of Shabbos. Roi lo laadam liyisragel lo shkol shavu yeh etzlo Shabbos day. So therefore, you try to make the whole week a preparatory um, adventure of Shabbos. So. In other words, be a Shabbos-centric type of person. Everything I'm doing is focused on this one day. Misha zocha lahachne, someone who's zocha to bring Hashem into the Chaim Shal, into his life. Roe mamash olam shalor, you'll see a world of light. Bechlal lo olam shachor, kefish mitztayer lifamim betaut, uzocha lesiad deshmaya nifloo. And you won't have darkness in your life because you'll have all the light. Um, because you'll be able to have a wondrous help from above. So when you are stumbling in a room that has no light, you end, end up stumbling and tripping on things. So if you have a, light, a, a life that does not have spiritual light, you will stumble and make mistakes, right? You need down to make mistakes. Even if, even if you don't intend to, we talk about how accidents happen to people who are sort of disconnected spiritually. Um, that idea that why does a person who accidentally kills someone end up in an ear miklat? It's not, they didn't, it was an accident. And in an American court, you would be fine. But in a Jewish court, accidental manslaughter ends you, uh, uh, finds you ending up in, um, in exile until the coin god dies. Could be a whole lifetime. Why is that? Or why should a person, this far I'm right that really a person's Objects, and animals, and cars, and all that stuff, it's an extension of who we are, right? Not just because I'm not focused on texting and so I crash. It's that it's an extension of who you are. So if in general, you're a person 
who is not necessarily concerned for other people's property, and then you wonder why your ox scored their, their uh, sheep. Well, intentions, even, even uh, a lack of concern for others, carries itself out in the physical world. Um, and the person who's always getting into mishaps, right, even if they're well-intentioned, even if they don't do anything wrong on purpose, and you can't blame them in the, in the physical world, but spiritually, when things are happening to us, we have to ask and wonder why that's the extent. Now, you don't say to the other person, this is why it's happening to you, but we should say to ourselves, this is why it's happening to me. Mm-hmm. Say it by yourself. It's insensitive to the others. Because we don't really know, but at least you should be in class with myself. So he's saying that if you live in a world which is light, which has spirituality, you're going to find yourself stumbling a lot less. Every time Yosef is saying his prayers, So because he's always living in a world of God, so God's ready for him. So that's why when Yosef, I think we've covered this in the past, when Yosef, day of of the day in which in which Asia Potiphar um, accosted him, it actually wasn't one day, it was constantly, right? And she said, she said, uh, you know, she she put pressure on him every single day. And um, and the reason he was able to do this is because every day of his life was a preparation for that moment. It wasn't like he woke up when he was a little kid and he was able to withstand some sort of pressure, but his whole day, his whole life was was preparing for that kind of resilience. If you want to build resilient children, right? if we want to be resilient to pressures in life, whatever those vices are, we have to be working on it all day long and every day to become the person when the time comes, you're ready for that. You're ready for the challenge. Um, Yaakov Nagain says the story about his student in Otniel. I've shared this story with you before. He had a student, one day he was in class and he was asking them, Parshish about about Emor, I think it was, about the Kohanim, why the Kohanim have to wash their hands and feet. And one, he's in one student said, because Kohen has to use his fingers and his hands and feet and fingers, especially hands, but those are the things that move you around. And those things have to be Kodesh, because those are the things that are responsible for the finest motor adjustments, right? So you put your hands on your child's face and you touch your child's face with, with tenderness. It's a loving moment. If you do it too hard, that's actually, you can push the child the wrong way. It could be painful, it could be hurtful, abusive. So the, the hands are responsible for such, right? You see a good buddy, I've seen a while, you give a hug, a slap in the back. You slap too hard, you hit your friend. You know, the fine, fine movements are where the line between holiness and unholiness lie. So this, um, this student, so when there was a terrorist attack in Oatmeal, that student was on Torah new duty. That means he was responsible for washing the dishes that day. And, and while they're singing Shalom Aleichem in the Chader Ochel, the kitchen is next door. Here's the Chader Ochel, 100, something, 150, 200 students are singing. Terrorists burst in through the kitchen, the other side. He quickly locks the kitchen door. He, he gets shot in the stomach. It's the most painful injury of all. He creeps up the door. He locks the door, takes out the key. And he threw the key away, hid the key away. So the terrorists couldn't get through. It took them long enough and the guards were able to come and, and neutralize the threat. And he saved hundreds of lives. He was killed. That student, right, that very student. Um, so uh, the ability to do that, he said, was because he understood that every movement is precious. And the police saw later in the report that he had reached for his own weapon. But he decided, he unfashioned it, and he decided that he may, not, he may be able to hold one or two off, but he decided he could save more lives by reaching for the key. And he made a decision in that moment to move one way or the other. He said, this was a student of his that understood you have to sanctify every every hand. So where do you become that kind of person in the moment? You don't become that person in the moment. You become that person over lifetime. Preparation. You don't make a Shabbos in one shot, right? You make a Shabbos in advance. The great Simcha Bun Pajishcha says, uh, the Pesach says, Lo savaru ish sechem. Don't light a fire. I think it's the Kutzka rabbi. It's the Kutzka and the Simcha Bonu are the same school. Lo savaru ish sechem yom Shabbos. Don't light a fire in all of your dwelling places on Shabbos. The only malach we learn about on Shabbos is fire. The rest we learn through Chazal. Don't light a fire in your own Shabbos. So I say, don't light a fire in your dwelling places. So he says that you think you're going to walk into Shabbos and have a nice Shabbos table? 
like that, you're going to light a fire on the spot. You have to light the fire before Shabbos. If you want energy, if you want positive smiros, you, want, you have to think about how that's going to look. You want a magical experience, you better put energy into planning for that experience. So we're all worried about Ma'amachar tomorrow. Anif Shoman calls Man Kolog of Rock. We hear voices, thunder, and lightning, right? Um, but we don't know what's going to happen today. There's a wondrous Pasuk in Eicha. Where is, they're going to say, where's the, where's the grain? Where's the wine? Nidvika lashon yonik el chikobet samah. His tongue, I guess, is, is, is clinging to his palate and thirst. I think that's how you translate that. Uh, and he'll, but, but he's not looking for water. What does he want? He wants wine. If a young child wanted wine, he's looking for what he used to have in his house before that. I have a bite called two of everything was so good. I had wine in this house. So the children be licking their palates, their mouths will be parched looking for wine. Why does it be looking for wine? Chorban ye beyom echad. It's going to happen in a second. Otherwise, it doesn't make sense that someone's asking for wine. They would ask for water, but they didn't even have time to adjust to the thought that a house wouldn't have wine. That's how quickly it happened. Right? It's a profound idea. That's worthy to quote this tissue book. If we have it, it should be a little bit sad. I can't forget the thought that I had in the Six Day War. The war broke out. The, the, the fear was wondrous in the land. Everybody was was And you were trembling. It was a few weeks after I became a, a, a chatan. Uh, I became um, engaged. I wasn't afraid. I'm an American immigrant. I can get on a plane and leave. <laughs> so he thought, <laughs> maybe I have to worry about my passport for me, for my wife also. So I went into the Israel Panim, right where they do the passports. If kid, I'm about the kid. Okay. Uh, he said, if you, uh, he said, if I have the ability to leave, who knows what's going to be tomorrow? And he said, he'll do whatever he can for me to also arrange a passport for my wife. I mean, I should get out of here as, as fast as possible. And he'll work on my wife's passport afterwards. Sometimes it takes several weeks. And so I guess they told me that, sir, your, your bag is in Tel Aviv. Your files in Tel Aviv can't help you. Okay. Obviously, in New York, my father's in New York. Hanala Center, Echad Shadi Top of the Inyan, Nishaku Mivrakim, Ulim Artsa, Shidarshua, Sadarat, Darkom, Ishti. They, they, I guess they raised, uh, they raised the heavens, right? Try to figure out how to get a passport for my wife. Baruch Hashem, Machar Haya Biadia, Darkom, and Yuchal Im Haviza. Next day, I had a passport with a visa. Ashwazu Yom, Kvar Pirza Machama. War already broke out. Sada to Ufa Shlisra and Nizgar, and the whole landing strip and the whole uh, airport was closed. How can I exp explain what that feeling was? We all we wanted to do was get out of the country. There was war was happening. We thought we were going to be leveled. We thought the Jews were gone. Six day war was a nace beyond belief. But everyone thought that was it. They were planning funerals around the land. They had caskets lined up. They were sure those caskets were of gold. We'll point out. Ended up making out of those um, sukkahs the following year. They built sukkahs out of these wooden caskets they had all over the place. But they thought that was it. That was the end. In fact, in the Russian television, where they show the uh, the news, what's it called? The um, the Russian propaganda news. Pravda. Pravda. They watched the videos 
Oh, they showed these videos also. They also showed videos of like Jews tilling the soil. And they were, and they, they showed it and said, Jews are digging the graves. They lost the war. They lied. And everyone believed it. Um, <clears throat> asked me. So I said, so I, said, so I thought to myself, new. You're such a smart man. You're an American. They're all stupid and you're smart. You're the only wise man who figured out how to get out of this land. You're here on a fool like you. You're stuck. And the impending disaster. You're stuck. And the impending disaster. That's what it says. Where is the grain? Where's the wine? Yesterday we were drinking wine. We don't even have water today. Not even bread. Rabbi Sai, Shlomo Melech Kvar Amar. Shlomo Melech already said, What was will be. Also, we have to worry about the dangers that, that surround us from outside and inside. History folds over itself constantly, repeats itself. Look at the wondrous life you have. Found the love of my life. I grabbed onto him and I won't let him go. In Cain, that's what the, she says about her, her beloved. In Cain, Tasu, Ain Lachem Malidog. Everyone reaches out to God three times a day. Usually the very toe. Speak to him. We talk to cry. We've caught. Call out and cry. Then you would see how great God is. And when it comes to reaching out to God, the main thing is, sorry, push the table. Um, the main thing is, is that we are, um, is that we have Shabbos. What do we do on Shabbos? He says that um, I lost my spot. Right, we have we have the ikkar is that we have Shabbos. So there we have the ability. To find God at any moment. Yeah. Where's the Gospel of Pamim and the Icarus on Shabbos? Um, Az Yeshlo more upon him. Then you have a light countenance when in a market, and God doesn't hold us accountable the same way. Every day you bring a sin offering to God. He called me Yeshlo Chaper Alvarez. You have to atone for your sins. Shabbos, Nekvasim, Bene Shanat Mim. On Shabbos, you bring two, two, cat, two kvasim, two sheep, a year old, shnei esronim, solet, and two esronim of flour. Every single Shabbos. Shabbos ain't chait. There's no korban chatas in Shabbos. There's no sin offering on Shabbos. In korban chatas, k'miyachol lo ichpas t'kash baruchu miyata. What does that mean? That means that we don't have to come to God and say, and confess our sins. God doesn't care on Shabbos who we are. He takes us in. K'miyachol lo ichpas t'kash baruchu if you're here on Shabbos, you must have been fit for Shabbos. So in other words, the arrival on Shabbos comes in assumption that we had done preparation in advance, that we are ready for it. All right, last piece in this, in this chapter. The years of God also Shabbos. Ani Choshev, page Yud Zayin in the Hebrew, what are we in the English? 24. 24. I think that Sod HaMaasi, Ein Lezakos Lamala Shabbos, the secret Right of action is not that we should have the greatness of Shabbos. Who are days the heroes being in Kabbalah Shabbos? Rather, most important thing we have to do is work on preparing to receive the Shabbos. The main problem is we're never ready. How can we do it? If everything of Shabbos is about preparing and we're not ready, then we've missed the point. That's a curse. Everything Shabbos Chol is different. Everything's ready. In other words, when we go into Shabbos unprepared, it is a bit of a curse. 
Kol hadin mistalkim. We know that on Shabbos all judgment is suspended. All din. All right. Tiv o shel olam shkom mi she omei lamot the rega charn who mit gaber moner shufne lefne shuhu nechve kofetz. Anyone who's about to die, the moment before they die, they have their gasp of air, right? And they jump up. There's a sudden empowering moment that happens before we die. That too is similar to a candle that begins to really get strong the moment before it flickers out and dies. So, the kach lefne Shabbos, so to Shabbos. Yodea Yetzir Hara, the Yetzir Hara knows, who omed la saimis tafkido, a meshach esrim va'arba shoh sabos, knows that within the 24 hours, you're now going to lose your purpose, Yetzir Hara. Yetzir Hara has no point anymore. That's why Arab Shabbos, it's so dangerous to get into a fight in the house, to get aggravated, to get stressed out. Why is Arab Shabbos so stressful? This is not just about preparation. But he says that the Yetzirah spiritually was happening. The Yetzirah knows that you're about to say goodbye to it. So it's got to really turn up the volume to kind of try to make you nuts. So the, the three things we say in the house, make an of right? You separate the dough. You light the candles, but it doesn't say he's, uh, he'd leak. It says light the candles. We don't say, did you do it? We don't question what the Gemara says. You have to say it by You have to say it nicely. It's not about, you better get ready. It's just, we have to get ready for Shabbos. Say it Everything should be done benachas. This is the acquisition of Shabbos. The extent that you enter Shabbos in peace, Shabbos will, will be conducted peacefully. When Shabbos arrives, to grab Hashem with all your strength, we know the Shabbos, we don't distract our mind from Shabbos at all. You see the flower. So, a Shabbos sticker, a bloom. This flower that flowers on Shabbos is a Shabbos sticker flower. Do you see this? I don't know, Gazoz. Sapling? Food, some sort of food. This is a pseudo Shabbos. All Shabbos, you can't take your mind away from that. This is special for Shabbos. I found the love, love of my life. I will not let go of. So we learn from here that preparation in Shabbos is the acre, is most important. The extent that you put in that time and effort, you will it will pay the dividends, at least spiritually endowed. The extent that person doesn't do so in the Yitzhahara encounters you before Shabbos, you'll lose out on the experience and uh, you'll be drawn away from Kedusha as well. So it is, and it's especially strong right before uh, right before Shabbos. All right.